A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I'm here with my camera, obviously, and an 85 millimeter lens. So I always think it's really good to challenge yourself a little bit in photography, do something a little bit differently, maybe take less shots. And one of the things that I like to do from time to time is just shoot with one focal length. So I've got 85 millimeters, um, it's a 85 millimeter f 1.8 lens i'm in one of my favorite areas in the lake district which should make the challenge a little bit easier and i'm going to be shooting a little bit of woodland probably quite a bit of woodland some lone trees maybe walk a little bit higher up there there's some stone walls there's some great mountains but i can only shoot 85 millimeters and i'm going to talk you through some of the shots i get and also tell you some of the benefits of doing this and why i think everyone should give it a go So one of the most important things for a challenge like this, I think, is to try and not constrain yourself to a tripod. So I've obviously got a tripod with me um, because there's going to be shots that I need to shoot at a lower shutter speed. Uh, but it's really important that I don't use that unless I need to. So I'm just going to be stopping in locations and just trying to find compositions handheld. And um, I was just looking around here and I've, I've seen one here. There's, there's, sort of three trees, of, well there's a lot of silver birch trees here, but there's three silver birch trees just here. And I think with the 85 mil, I was just looking through and it looks pretty good from a point of view of just getting the top part of the trees. So I'm just trying to isolate them a little bit. So I'm gonna put that on my tripod and, and take that because I think it's gonna look pretty good. It's a good starter um, image, which I think is always good when you're trying to go out shooting. So I'll grab this and we'll see what else we can find. So one of the things that having a fixed focal length makes you do is move around. You've got to move around because you can't just zoom in and out. And I feel like sometimes with a 24 to 70, you can get a bit lazy. You can get in a spot, you can zoom in and out. You think, oh, that looks good, but you don't actually move your feet. And actually moving with your feet is so important. So I was just over there before, the shot just wasn't quite working. So I thought I'll just have a little walk over here to see if I can find something a bit better. And now I've got up a little bit higher. I can see more of the foliage in the bottom, which works a little bit better. Um, and yeah, it just is, is a nicer scene. I've got the mountain in the background. I can't get the top of the mountain in. And again, I probably would have got the top of the mountain in if I was using a zoom lens, but I actually think it works pretty well without it because it gives a little bit, it leaves a little bit more to the imagination. Um, so I've got this tree here and then um, I'll show you in fact. So I've got this tree here and by moving, I've just got this um, tree at the bottom, which I think works. And then I've got the mountain in the background there and this tree just coming over. Just gotta be a little bit careful of light because there's light going over. So I think I've got a good shot when it wasn't as bright as it is now. And I think it looks pretty nice. Oh, about the tripod. Um, the, this is a very tall tripod and it's one that I use when I'm shooting woodland because um, I find that height is a really important thing in woodland. So I'll put a link in the description to the model of it, but it's, um, yeah, it's really good. So one of the other great things about using a lens, especially a longer lens like the 85mm, is that you try different things, you experiment more, you, you, you look out for things that perhaps you wouldn't do if you're just walking along with your 24 to 70 or 24 to 200 or something. Um, and I was just walking, I just saw these ferns that look nice, they're just starting to unfurl. And um, I've just shot down on, on this fern and it looks really nice. Now, if you were just walking down the path, you probably just wouldn't even notice it. You probably can't even tell as much that I'm shooting at here, but you can see through my lens here, I've just got these in focus, the tips of them and then the background ferns out of focus in the, in, in, in the background. I'm gonna have a look for another shot like this because I might find a better um, position for a shot like this, or maybe I can shoot down low at one, which might look quite good, especially if the light starts to come out and I can maybe get some out of focus sort of bokeh 
behind it. So yeah, so definitely try this. It's so, so good. And you just sort of develop your creativity as a photographer. Okay, I've seen a shot just here. There's three different trees. I'm gonna to have to move back a little bit, I think though, because here I'm just a little bit close in on them. So I'm just gonna move back just a little bit and that'll just give me a little bit more height, which I think will be good as long as those trees don't get in the way. So I found a nice little scene here. There's a dead tree that's um, fallen down, but then there's another live tree above it, which I think sort of mirrors it a little bit in terms of shape. So I've tried to get that. I've had to move back a little bit and sort of decide on what I'm gonna crop off, off the edges. I feel like just having that constraint that the only way to change the composition is move myself or um, you know, just like do small changes to, to it like this. So, so maybe I want, you know, the end of the trees in there, or maybe I want to get this tree in here. Um, and then how much of the grass do I want down here? So I think there's a lot of things to think about um, in, a, in a composition anyway. And just to be able to not worry about zooming in and out, I think it's really, really good for creativity. So I'll take this, um, the sun's coming in and out, I've got to be careful with that because the silver birch just catches the light a lot and I don't want it to burn out. Um, but I'm sure there's gonna be so many other things to shoot here. The greens at the moment are so nice. I just love May, it's so fantastic. So this is Castle Crag in the background, which is a really nice little hill. And you can see that if I just hold up at the moment, and this is, would be a problem whatever lens you had on really, but um, I just need to anchor the bottom of the frame. So the top of the frame you can see is pretty good, but there's nothing to anchor the bottom of it. So I need something that's, that, that tree on the left there doesn't quite work. And then there's nothing really over there. So I'm gonna move around, look over there somewhere and see if I can find something in the distance that'll just anchor that shot. And then when the sun comes on Castle Crag, I think it looked really good. And then also I've got to just look back where the sun's coming from, cause it's just at the moment lighting up the back of the new ferns, which just looks so nice. So I spotted something a little bit different for me, some houses just in this little sort of hamlet down here. And I'm going to shoot at f1.8 because that's the sharpest part of the lens. I feel like if the trees in the foreground are out of focus, it's not going to matter too much. But I like this because I like the fell at the back that gives sort of a sense of a drama, a bit of place into the whole scene. I think it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I would have never spotted that. Whoa, there's a nice tree down here as well. There's some really nice light just came through then. And as you can see, the tree in the sort of mid ground there will point to it in the edit, but you, the, it was just catching the light and I was trying to wait and timing so important in landscape photography just for the light to come through. And that was sort of the anchor to the bottom of the shot, which I think is so important in any photograph you take, especially when you're shooting um, in portrait mode, because most people look at an image from the bottom up. So you just want to be able to lead them in through something. And that was a really nice anchor. So um, yeah, at the moment it's in shade. 
it was nice when that was just lit up by the sun. So I think I got a shot. And then the other thing was, I was just shooting through the bush over there, um, the ghost bush, uh, F1.8, which was good. Actually, the sun's coming now, so there might be a chance to get it when the sun sort of just goes over that way, which it tends to be doing. Um, so I'll see if it comes now. So I always find at this time of year that it's tricky with big patches of bracken where they're sort of in the mid ground, I'd say, because they look um, sort of quite flat and they've not got a nice texture to them. On the distant fells, they look pretty good because you just get this sort of brown patches. So I've got to be careful about this. And as we're getting into more sparse trees to try and find sort of isolated trees, I feel like the bracken's not really helping in the composition. So I think what I'm going to do is head back down into the woodland, the more dense woodland, where there's more green, different colours of greens, and see if I can find something there. That's where, you know, the 85 mil will really come to life. I did want to shoot some backlit trees, but I feel like the bracken is probably going to ruin that a little bit. So I think we'll go back down. Okay, so I've come into more sort of dense woodland now with a hope that I can just pick out something really nice. And I found this sort of broken old wall here, which is fantastic. There's moss growing everywhere and there's some really nice oak trees. And um, just down here, if I just sort of jump into the scene. So the, pro the problem is that I feel like this side's okay. And I like the tree, the tree works well. It's got a good background to the tree, but these trees here just distract from the the shape of the tree on the right hand side and obviously we can't do much about that so I don't think it quite works but I think over the brow there might be something and then looking back so I'm just going to stick around here and see what I can find because I think there could be something really interesting but um, it's gone overcast as well which is quite nice for woodland photography so it should work quite well. Oh, this is a really nice scene. The sun's just come out and it looks pretty good. It's catching the back of the leaves. So it's backlighting them, looking really nice, the green lush leaves. And then we've got this grass that's growing in this boggy area. And I think it looks nice. When the sun is a little bit higher like this and you're in woodland, it's really, really important to try and shoot sort of into the sun a little bit more. When the sun goes down behind a cloud, you can pretty much shoot any direction this is going to be your best bet because if you shoot in that direction and we'll show a bit of footage in that direction but it's just you get all the shadows and everything here the shadows are coming towards you and it just works a lot lot better so i've got this scene um i've gone low the 85 mil is perfect for it and the background is really nice as well because it's just all trees so it just works really nice i'm going to take it with sun and without sun so you can see the difference between the two and um, yeah, works incredibly well. The other thing I'd mention is when you're shooting anything like this, especially in woodland, you, you, you need to try and create a little bit of simplicity in what otherwise is quite a complex scene. It's not always the case, it's just a, a tip really. And this green area is quite nice. It just, again, just leads the eye nicely into the scene. So it looks pretty good. Well, that was a fantastic little shoot. I hope that I got something out of shooting with the 85 millimeter lens. I'm just having a rest now. Found a nice platform to sit down on. And speaking of platforms, Squarespace is an amazing platform to set up your website. So if you're looking to set up a website, maybe you're looking to set up an online store, or maybe you're just looking to share your photos in a gallery, 
Squarespace makes it super easy. You don't need any technical skills. They've got 24 seven support. So if you're looking to do that, then check out the link in the description below. You get 10% off, use the offer code Nigel or go to Squarespace forward slash Nigel. Thanks ever so much for watching and until next Sunday, bye.